Um, so I don't know about you, but I'm a very simple dev. Um, I have the utmost respect for all the people uh, who are contributing to open source, who are creating all these monolithic style libraries, who, are, who invented I.O. and uh, who are doing all the amazing stuff that I'm, I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis. But I'm a simple dev, and I have this guy from the business that comes to me, and he's like, hey, Marcin, do you mind um, exposing this, this API? There will be a JSON flying here and there. Uh, maybe you can talk to another API that we need to integrate with um, because we want to fetch some data from there, um, and maybe we can add some basic authorization, authentication, or some middleware, um, logging here and there, um, and maybe we can you know, use all this fancy um, JVM Swagger um, documentation, or, or we can generate it somehow so it will save us some boilerplate. Um, so I cannot be this guy that let him uh, that that will um, bring the answer of, of like, um, you know what? I can do this, but I'll need to like three days to do this, then five days to set up this thing, because Java guys, if you have a look at the, all the Spring conferences and all the um, Java Javish conferences, they can do like zero to production in, in one hour because they have like these building blocks. So there are a few questions actually. Can we do the same with Scala? Do we have all the integrations? Can we can we make this? Can we use this robust FP um, programming um, for the matter of delivering this, this business value of parsing these JSONs that we that we have of saving things to database of um, exposing our metrics to Prometheus or whatever you, you use um, inter internally um, and so on. So the question is when we are creating a new service or a new microservice, um, whatever your um, modularity is, um, can we do this with Scala? Or should we go with, with Java? Because um, initially it will be something very small. Um, can we, uh, using Scala, can we expose our metrics somewhere? Can we make the documentation? Can maybe we can generate a client out of this uh, documentation? What can we do, actually? So um, my name is Marcin, and uh, today I'll be talking about um, the state of Scala um, HTTP layer. Um, if you're uh, familiar with, with other talks at this conference, uh, but maybe um, you miss them, there are plenty of case studies um, showing people's um, building application, real applications on, on the Zio, on the, on the CATS level, uh, type level, and the uh, using CATS effect uh, stuff. Um, so I'll be, I'll be showing some experiences that we, that we have at Flexis. Um, nightly, I'm trying to, to speak at, at these conferences, uh, meetups, and uh, doing some, some uh, pull requests to, to open source, uh, but just to read me because uh, I barely understand the, the, the other parts. Uh, so I made this mis uh, big mistake because I submitted my call for paper before I actually started preparing the first slide, even. So I thought, like, okay, um, how, do, how can we compare servers? So I asked on a few, few Discord channels, I asked on a few Slack channels, and people were, were like, hey, I want to see um, what, I, what config I need for the quick start, um, you know, what codec serializers I can use for my, for my entity, um, you know, is it like a uh, type safe, um, this, is the solution type safe, um, you know, can I expose some metrics, um, can I expose some, can I do, you know, tracing, like maybe some advanced stuff, like logging, tracing, um, you know, how can I test this, how can I uh, write simple unit tests, how can I write maybe more complex uh, integration test, uh, you know, what's the performance um, between uh, different um, HTTP servers, um, you know, how can I deploy this, uh, do they support the gRPC, do they, you know, support the web sockets, and, and uh, do they use streaming, and, and all the stuff. Um, as soon as I realized um, how many different um, things we, we can have when we want to compare servers, and how many uh, of um, different use cases we, 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 we should support, I realized that uh, there is only one valid metric. How many PhDs do I need to expose, like uh, some simple stuff, um, support, supported by uh, working out of the box things like you know, authorization, um, serial, 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 serialization uh, of, of the entity I have, um, and maybe some, uh, maybe some tokens flying here and there. Um, if you think about you know, what we have 
um, in, in the Scala ecosystem. We have uh, HTTP for us, Zio HTTP, um, Akka HTTP, uh, you know, uh, maybe some of you remember Play Framework. Um, we have many, many backends and backend libraries supporting those, those backends. So in today's talk, I'll be focusing mostly on the two key players, uh, which in my opinion are um, HTTP for us um, based on the cards and uh, Zio HTTP. All right, so HTTP is, as you, as you might know, um, type full because it is uh, in, um, immutable structures. It's functional, you know, using um, wrapping all these all these things in the in the I/O. Support streaming based on FS2 um, and cross platform so, so we can uh, basically, uh, we, without much of an effort, have this working on the um, uh, uh, Scala native and, and Scala JS. All right, so the simple dependency that we need to have in our code is actually these four lines. Um, so firstly, we need to decide which kind of, ser which kind of um, backend server we want to have. Uh, I've chosen Blaze for, for this example. They support also um, other ones like um, Ember, for example, and so on. Uh, we, I guess we need CRC for you know, working our, with our entities. Um, you know, some, H <coughs> some uh, CRC support from, from generic project and um, um, HTTP for us, DSL. Uh, so this is a table showing um, with how many different backends actually HTTP for us um, integrates. So um, you can see uh, Ember and Blaze that I have already talked about. They, they also support um, GTK HTTP client and few, a and few others. Um, so I've noticed that I think most of the people that are talking at this conference work at the library because uh, we are modeling our domain uh, with, with books and uh, you know, maybe some authors and some, some basic stuff. So, so let's, let's assume that we have a book, um, we have some author, and uh, we have a book service and um, you know, author service that will provide our business logic uh, and will help us you know, fetching all the data, doing, doing all the stuff that we, that we don't care um, for, the, for the sake of this, uh, of this um, API layer. So um, how HTTP actually understands the server? Some people can tell you that it's like Clicy or whatever. I don't actually know what is Clicy and, and I don't really want to know what it is. So for HTTP, for us, it's like quite simple because they understand server as a function from the request to the response. But not for, actually, not for every request we will have a response, then why, then why it's option of response. And they, they assume that this response um, might have some effects. So it might actually talk to database, maybe you know, um, the, the service will talk to um, and it, you know, another uh, will use client to make a request or whatever. So that's why it's like request from F option response. So to, to have this, the, to expose the, the simple, simple endpoint uh, with um, GET, we have this um, uh, partial function uh, that takes a tuple. So the first one is um, HTTP method that we want to work on. And the, uh, the second part of the tuple is the, the path. And we can wrap this um, into our um, response that comes from the uh, imported HTTP for us DSL. So what if we want to support uh, some you know, query parameter? Um, what we have to do uh, I'll, and I'll show you this in, in a second. We need to create like a um, custom query uh, parameter decoders. So if we want to use um, string um, as the um, other name in our application and we want to um, use a custom thing, which is here, um, we need to also this, add this, this implicit that will try to convert the integer that we'll, that we'll have in our path to, um, to actually something more complicated, which is, which is a Java. Uh, Java uh, year. Um, so this is the example of um, a bit more complicated thing with those uh, query parameters um, in the path. Um, we can easily we can easily use the um, this this implicit that I, that I have shown you on the on the previous slide um, and talk to our services um, and do uh, what we what we want with these uh, filtered uh, books by authors and and here. Um, I've actually made two assumptions here, and I'm trying um, to be explicit about them. So I've used this SJSON method that comes with CRC 
just to uh, use the, the encoder that I have. And I have used this um, header uh, just to show you that we can um, add this um, header, custom header, into our, into our response. Um, if we want to um, put our um, um, a, uh, two, uh, two APIs, two routes on, on the different um, different domains. We can we can easily do this. And uh, if we want to um, compose them, also that that's achievable. And um, so the last thing that we actually want to do is to run this this, this server, providing uh, por uh, port and um, um, the routes that we have that we have um, created, or APIs if if you if you prefer. Um, hgp 4 s also supports some more complex um, examples with, um, you know, with CRC allowing you to parse your JSON and, and do um, all the stuff. So you can have like, you know, support for, for all these um, post, put, delete, and other HTTP methods. All right. So what, what, if, we want to, what if we want to expose our uh, metrics somewhere? Okay, we want to measure, do some measurements, performance measurements or whatever, and we want to, to expose this somewhere. We, all we need to do, there is um, integration with Prometheus. Um, we can import this to our project and pass those um, metered routes uh, and run them with the server. Okay. What about middleware? For mo most um, use cases, we have some authentication or authorization, or authorization or some permissions here and there that we want to check when we are you know, allowing someone to, to enter our application. And we can use this um, middleware support from the HTTP 4S um, to um, implement this um, as well. We can do this for all the routes, or we can do it for uh, some um, subset of, of routes that we want the um, uh, user to be uh, authored. Uh, there's also support for, for other things, like, like cookies, you know, headers, tokens, or you can uh, think of. Uh, if you want to do um, CSRF or course, uh, if you want to apply some metrics or you know define um, some um, restrictions or some restricted methods for this uh, to prevent some attacks or whatever, you can you can have this uh, working out of the box. Right, testing using this um, HTTP um, for a test um, project, you can you can also have this. Um, Easy tested, unit tested um, uh, by by the code. All right, uh, error handling, functional, composable, yada yada yada. We know all, we know all this. Uh, so yeah, that's not interesting. So what about Zio? Uh, I've mentioned Zio HTTP. Um, you know, um, maybe we can do the same with with Zio, or even more, or less. Um, and I'm not biased by you know you should use, use Zio HTTP or, or Zio stack, or you should use HTTP 4s and then the cast stuff. Because like I can assume that um, you know maybe you're joining the project that you know the decision was made like few few years ago and uh, currently you're on, on this uh, stack or you know you, you don't want to change stack or your company um, does not want to change stack. So uh, yeah, we import um, this 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 uh, four lines um, now the. The last line, IOD11, is uh, Zio HTTP, if I'm correct. Uh, but uh, when, I was, when I was preparing this, um, it was in uh, Dream 11. All right. So again, exposing something, something simple. Um, don't, be scared, don't be scared by this um, HTTP um, for parameters, because the, um, it's like a Zio, um, regular Zio that we, or some of you might know, but um, extended by the, by the response type. Um, yeah, again, a very similar mechanism. We have a tuple um, that um, um, takes the first parameter of HTTP method, um, a path, and uh, yeah, we decide what we do, uh, what we want to do with the, with the rest. Um, on the previous slide, if you if you have a if you if you've noticed, there is this um, collect request method, but we can also do um, collect Zio that can uh, collect uh, responses that are actually um, wrapped into into Zio effects. Uh, yeah, then we can combine. There's like a double plus operator um, which um, 
tells you about concatenation. So basically, um, there is also this, the, some other operator, operators. Um, they, they, um, the difference is that if the first um, application is in the, if the request of the first application and the, uh, will not be found, uh, so the partial um, function will not match. It then goes to to the other one. Um, when you have the, the other operators, um, it differs. So, um, for example, when you have the um, uh, failed. Uh, when the first um, partial function failed, then you go to, to the other. Uh, yep, we basically start a server um, that um, implies Zion never, so it never ends, in, uh, at it runs um, forever. All right, what about logging? So, uh, yeah, Zio has this uh, rich middle where where you can do a bunch of bunch of stuff. So, um, assuming you want to, you know, you want to record your requests um, and maybe you know log them somewhere um, with with some token, um, and maybe you want to list this uh, the request, the, um, some you know parameters of the request, um, and maybe you want to you know uh, record something from the from the response side. Yeah, you can you can do this, and all you need to do is to is to tag your um, application with um, you know either for example middleware debug that comes with with um, Zio or uh, the the me method that I have just implemented here. All right, what about chorus config or C um, SRF? Again, uh, we can you know. Um, Make one uh, one set of routes to, to generate this stuff, um, and the other one to, to validate it works. Um, all of these things works out of the uh, out of the box. Uh, what about basic um, authentication or you know some bar authorization? Um, yeah, we have this um, uh, working with with um, UHTP app, which is uh, what I have shown you uh, before. The type is like. You know, a shortcut of um, HTTP uh, from any nothing request and response, but it works and it's there. So we we don't have to you know um, create everything by ourselves. We can can use it and uh, it works pretty pretty good. All right. If you want to um, expose some um, some metrics, um, it's uh, it's easy as well. Uh, there are like uh, projects, uh, for example, Zio Telemetry or, or other ones that um, easily integrate with with Zio HTTP um, and allows you to um, to play with those uh, play with those um, metrics and expose them to the um, external external world. All right. Uh, same if you want to, um, you know, um, use the metrics connector. Um, and you have like few layers that you want to record, and maybe you know you want to uh, manipulate over uh, some values, um, or you want to publish them somewhere. Uh, yeah, is there? Uh, it's working, and uh, it's working even in in, in prod. All right. Uh, what about testing? I have shown you before testing of the um, Cats Effect app. Uh, with, if you use uh, Zio Test, that you should be familiar with, because um, I've been talking about this for um, for the last conference. Um, so I hope you use this. Um, yeah, we have this effectively, um, you know, suits that allows us to to test the routes and um, yeah, both in the um, in the uh, unit test as well as the integration test. Uh, yeah, I've mentioned about um, I've mentioned already telemetry project, but there is also the open tracing that um, yeah allows you to do um, almost the same things. Uh, what if you want to have uh, HP for S and Zio combined? Is it even possible? Yeah, it's possible. Um, I'm not sure if you want to do this, but maybe it will be the first step to have you know um, Zio sneaking into your into your um, type level stack, and maybe you want um, you want to show your um, colleagues that. It works and uh, it can be it can be fun. Okay, so HP is not just servers; it's much more. Okay, it's like clients, maybe some entity serializers, and again, how to convert clients? Very hard question uh, because we have at least these. So um, yeah, I won't be comparing all of them, but uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be mentioning a few. Um, so if you're if you're very lazy and want to you know client working out of the, out of the box, you can do this for HTTP for us client that comes with the project or with uh, Zio HTTP client. But if you're really sane, you will use the HTTP 
think. Um, so um, I think Adam gave like multiple talks on SDP. It has perfect documentation, like super helpful in in, in many cases. Um, you know, allows you to make this this um, request to to your um, endpoints. You know, help, very helpful when it comes to the integration test. Um, and uh, you know, again, functional, um, composable, type safe, and so on and so on. Uh, yeah, and very, very testable, which I, which I like, and um, I think it's one of the um, main um, cases also that we, that we use this at, at Flexis. Uh, yeah, what about if you want to describe your, describe your um, API? There are like three solutions, again, like type API, endpoint for us, and, and Tapir. Uh, yeah, but again, shout out to um, software mill guys who are um, developing the, the Tapir tank, which um, yeah um, comes with many integrations. Um, the ones that I especially like are Open API and Swagger, uh, and yeah, it puts like layer of abstraction um, on the on the API, and uh, you know um, you can generate um, documentation, you can reuse those endpoints and, and work with them. So that's pretty nice when you have uh, you know when you are trying to design your API first, and then maybe you know try about things like um, you know how how it will work under the hood. So we've tried Tapir. Uh, I'm sure you've, you've heard about this, but um, yeah, quick um, quick reminder: we can have this this base, base endpoint that you know defines the the error type and you know defines the um, the main path, which is books in in this example, um, and uh, yeah, allows you to you know create uh, paths like uh, for example add book and uh, you know define uh, like what what you want to have there. Uh, that it, you want to header, you want to authorization token to be there, you know, what kind of uh, JSON you want to be there, and so on and so on. Um, and it, it, uh, on this slide, um, sorry, um, it works with um, uh, Blaze server, which is coming from the HTTP for us. But it will also um, has its own, own interpreter for the for these IO. Which is which is uh, perfect if you are if you are working on the on the Zio uh, Zio level uh, Zio um, type, uh, stack stack sorry um, yeah and it also integrates with with, with Swagger um, that I've already mentioned which is you know super useful thing so you don't have to um, uh, write your API in the in doc and maintain this uh, continuously. All right. So usually we have some some entities um, that are we are sharing between between um, you know uh, projects. They are either you know um, wrapped in JSON um, most most often, but uh, yeah maybe you have some some old project that's using um, XML or whatever. And we have many many entity encoders that uh, you know um, integrates with with many projects. Again, type level and Zio stack as well. Um, I think the most two popular are CRC, which, which is very convenient to, and easy to use, um, as well as the Zio JSON that you know um, has all this um, case class uh, JSON conversion both ways, um, and you know allows you to decode and encode your entities, your JSONs in a very, um, very simple and um, easy, easy to read way. Yeah. What if we want to generate some um, some API documentation? I've already mentioned this, but just a quickly remi reminder: we can use uh, Tapir. Uh, if we if you want to, for example, generate a client or generate documentation out of your out, out of your HTTP, you can use um, this predefined um, YAML file, which will allow you to generate a client. Actually, this thing, this Open API YAML file. Allowed me to generate exactly this piece of, of YAML. Allowed allowed me to generate the thing you have already seen. Yeah, this was purely generated by the um, LBT generator that integrates with SDP and Open um, Open API format. Yeah. So, what about the rest? We have much more. I didn't talk about performance. I didn't talk about you know gRPC, um, GraphQL things. Uh, you know, we have Mesmer, which you know allows you to work with metrics. We have some serverless um, 
lambda functions that, that you know, some of you might be working with, and so on. Um, there is much more, and it only proves a few things. If we have functional and composable um, ACP server libraries, if we have flogging, if we have metrics, if we have middleware, if we have descriptive, uh, descriptive, descriptive APIs, if we have um, documentation that can be generated out of the, out of the code or, or, or the code that can, um, or the documentation can generate your client code or whatever, um, and we have many integrations. It means one thing, sorry. It means one thing, that we are ready for um, using Scala in production in any use case. It means FP for, for everyone, so I highly encourage you to, um, to try to talk to your boss or your colleagues, um, not to write next, next, um, your next microservice in, in Ruby or Java or Golang or whatever, but just to try, try Scala and uh, work with this. Some references, um, I've stolen most, most of my examples either from Flexis, um, from my work, or uh, from, from these documentations, so thanks guys for this. And yeah, special thanks for, for, for the attending my talk, um, for spending half an hour of your time with me. Um, yeah, thanks OSS contributors. I use your code all the time, um, and I'm really glad I, I, can, I don't have to contribute to this because like, it's pure magic for me. Um, and yeah, thanks for everyone who's using this because if you, are, if you are actually using this, we can provide some business value, we can provide some you know, things we really need for developing robust um, FP applications that actually work in production and deliver um, some solution for, for these business guys who are paying us lots of money. Uh, yeah, thanks Adam, John, Sandra, Agatha, everyone for, for organizing this, the conference and uh, yeah, all the conference conf uh, sponsors. Thank you. If you have any questions, I think I've run out of time um, slightly. So uh, yeah, I'll be here and uh, yeah, thank you.